I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. And my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, come together, sons and daughters. Fought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. The grace we wrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ, the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, now that you're not done, good enough it is still to come, oh, I believe, if I'm not dead, you're not done. Things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe this is my testimony from death to life. Good grace rewrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified This is my testimony, oh I'm alive This is my testimony, from death to life Good grace rewrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, if I'm not dead, you're not done, greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Testimony from death to life. Good grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. Good grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh,
Aleluya. 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 My testimony. Amen. From death to life. Aleluya. We, we thank God for this another day. We want to say to our listening audience and to everyone in this house again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers and fathering men. We thank God for you. We thank God for our Father, for being our Father, being over us. And uh, we just bless him. We thank him for the day we became a father and what a blessing that has been in my life to rear children and to celebrate family in a loving environment with wife and, and just a whole bundle of things that go along with it. And God has seriously blessed us, and, and we thank him for it. We thank him for it. And we bless you today, uh, and we encourage all men everywhere that our fathers, for some reason, this just seems to be the season for fathers. And everything has opened up. There's been almost a new awareness. And the other night, I was looking at the Oprah Winfrey uh, special on fathers. And, and it was marvelous. If you get a chance, look at it. It was, it was just marvelous about men and their journey at becoming fathers and what happens in that journey, some good and some bad, but but in most of the stories, all of the stories, there was a victory. And so we encourage men everywhere, be good fathers, trust the Lord, and he will make a difference in your life. Believe me, it's true, I'm a living witness. And so we welcome you to Dove Church today on this Father's Day. I have a special message for us today. And so we bless you. We thank you for your constant support to this ministry, for your viewership, and for just looking in on us and sending us words. And, and I do read them, and we respect and we thank God for your comments. Uh, keep praying for us. Keep giving it to us. Dove Church is good ground. Uh, we're located right at Military and Horatio. Uh, you'll get good information at the end of this presentation. And, and with that, we're going to move fastly into the, the word message today. And we're going to start as usual with our confession. Everybody with your Bible in your hand or wherever your Bible is located on whatever device. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes, that faith comes, that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for the ability to laugh. We thank you for the ability to rejoice. We thank you that we can enjoy your presence, that you will fellowship with us. Holy Spirit, you are invited to take charge and to take us where we need to be. Speak through us. Speak to our hearts today. Move us into the mind of God fastly that the people will be edified, changed, and transformed. And we ask it all, believe and we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. The prodigal heart. The prodigal heart. This is something that we had shared some years back. And God laid it into my heart early this week. And you know, sometimes as, as, as a preacher, you kind of you kind of keep wanting to go your own way and, and you can't do it until you kind of knuckle in and do what he asks you to do. Or you will spend a lot of time working on something else and he still won't let you do it. Amen? Amen. And so 
So here it goes with, with the emphasis that he placed on my heart for this season in this time, the prodigal heart. And the reading begins in, and I'm, I'm going to give you the beginning scripture because it sets up the rest of it and why we got the story of the prodigal son. And it's the story about the prodigal son. And it's Luke 15, 1, 2, and 3. Verses 1, 2, and 3. And I don't think you have to take many notes, but I just want you to follow my path today. It's going to be a blessing. And it said there, and here is that reading, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. Talking about Jesus now. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, And, and thus far is the beginning of the entire 15th chapter, and it is dedicated to the scribes and Pharisees and a group of sinners. But it's what the scribes and Pharisees say that prompts this, this, this trilogy of stories. One is about the lost sheep. One is about a lost coin. And another one is about a lost son. All of them are parables. Earthly, heavenly stories with an earthly lesson. A parable. And here is the situation. The scribes were the ones that copied and edited the law. The Pharisees were the religious and political group. They were the righteous ones. So they couldn't understand how Jesus was entertaining them and sinners at the same time. It's still the condition of the church. They hated Jesus and railed every accusation against him. And the chief complaint being that he receives sinners and eats with them. What a complaint. Well, he came for sinners. But he eats with them and he hangs out with them. Well, I, 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 could, I could work on that for a minute. So at that point, Jesus tells these three parables that are encased in Luke, the 15th chapter. But let's hone into the prodigal son. Just so you'll not trip over language, what does prodigal mean? We've heard it for years. What does prodigal mean? What is a prodigal son? What is a prodigal son? What does prodigal mean? Prodigal and, and, and when I read the definition, I, I just pulled up a regular definition from the dictionary. And, and I said, oh, my God. When I read what prodigal means, the first thing it means, one who spends money extravagantly. <laughs> I had to say, am I a prodigal? <laughs> and then it goes on to say, Without necessity. That means you're just spending to be spending. You're shopping to be shopping. One that is lavish and a waster. Whew. God, that, all of that hit home, doesn't it? And then it goes on to say, spendthrift. Spendthrift. I think at one point all of us have been guilty of being a prodigal until you get some, 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 some control and some restraint in your life. Or either they put constraint in your life. But what I want to do is zoom into this story and it's in Luke 15, 11 through 24 is the first half of the prodigal son story. And so, not to read it all, I'm going to give a synopsis or the general action of the story. Is that okay? Here is the synopsis. 
A man has two sons. The younger son asks his father for his portion of the family estate, estate, also known as the inheritance. Once received, the son promptly sets off on a journey to a distant land and begins what the scripture says as riotous living. Really, it's wasteful, extravagant, prodigal living. And he wastes his fortune on wild living. When the money runs out, his luck also turns to a, 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 a double bad time because famine hits. And the son finds himself in dire straits. He takes a job feeding pigs, which is ironic because it's a Jewish man telling the story and they don't deal with pigs. Not a ham hock or a pork chop. I dare say a chitlin. They don't deal in pig. So for this boy to end up at, at, as somebody servicing pigs. Mean you had sunk to the lowest low. Are y'all out there? And. Not only did he feed the pig, but he had to resort to eating pig food. And if you know anything about farming, you can throw anything into the pig sty. Slop, they just eat it up. Eventually, he grows so destitute that he even longs to continue to, to eat this food. And, 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 and finally, finally, he comes to his senses. I think it was the slop that brought him to his senses. I'm looking up at a pig. Oh, I'm in the trough with the pig. We eating the same thing. Tell me there's some things in life that won't make you come to your senses. When he came to his senses, he remembered that his father had enough. In humility, he recognizes his foolishness and decides to swallow pride and go back home. Broke, hungry, raggedy, and smelling like a pig. Thus far the story. So he gets back to his father and asks for forgiveness and mercy. The father who has been watching and waiting for his son to come back. Receives his son back with open arms of compassion. He is overjoyed by the return of his lost son. The father gives the returning son a ring, a robe, and sack. As well as prepares a great banquet for him. Everybody say, thus far the story. Well, the truth is, this father had two prodigal sons. One was prodigal in his actions, but the other was prodigal in his heart. Here is the reaction of the older brother to the return of the younger brother. And that's where it picks up in Luke 15, 25 to 32. And it reads, and let me, let, let me just proceed. Now his older brother, everybody said now his older son, was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. Maybe it was Frankie Beverly. I don't know. So he 
called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and, and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. You only kill the fatted calf on special occasions. Usually in the Jewish family, it's once a year. It's the best. It's like, it's better than prime rib. It's filet mignon. It, it's the top of the animal. Whew. My God, my God. And it said, but he was angry, continuing the reading, and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, after the father pleads with him, he answered and said with him, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours come, came, this son of yours, come on, y'all getting the drift? Not my brother, this son. Come on, come on. Oh, it's nasty, y'all. I could hear it in non-biblical language. Sure, so as soon as this son <laughs> come on. Oh, 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 it was thick in the family. Who has devoured your livelihood? He went on to call out his sin with harlots. Uh, that's a fancy name for whores. You killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, he said to him, the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. Everybody say, it was right. Come on, come on, come on. Are, are y'all getting this today? For your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So, let me read that again. It was right that we should make merry for him. Y'all better get this today. Sometimes we can be so wrong we don't know that it's right to do this. The older brother in, the, in, in, in this parable represents the Pharisees and scribes who grumble at Jesus' reception of sinners. It's not unlike the church today. Notice that the older brother is out in the field working when the younger brother returns. Let me unpack this some more. The father, on the other hand, is waiting and watching for the younger brother. And, and, and the celebration happens. And, but, 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 but the thing that broke the, the older brother's uh, countenance that made him the most upset is that you did the highest order of thing in celebration of him. You killed the fatted calf for him. He became so angry until after the father told him, come in, celebrate with us. Celebrate with me, your father. Celebrate with me. He said, I'm not coming in. I'm not coming in. He was tore up. Let's, let's, let's talk about a few things. Number one, this is what he said. I have worked hard, but you gave me no banquet. 
Ooh. He thought the he thought the basis for obtaining the father's favor was his work. You have people that count who's working. Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Why aren't they doing more? I seem to be doing everything. Oh. Put your little tabulator up. Because Titus 3 and 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Number two, he said this. You, you have given your other son a banquet when all he did was sin. You gave him a banquet. When all he did is sin. The older brother expected to be rewarded again for his work. He expected the younger brother to have been disowned. Throw him out because he didn't do anything but waste stuff. He's a prodigal. I'm not. I've been here working with you all the time. So he's deserving of nothing. And that's what the Pharisees were telling Jesus about sinners. What are you doing hanging out with them? Throw them out. Just deal with us. We're the righteous ones. Ooh. What the older brother failed to comprehend was the grace of the Father. What grace, pastor? The redemptive period that says when you come back and you ask for repentance that I am going to work to reconcile you back to the family and restore you and I can't restore you by punishing you. So I've got to put something on you to make you think you belong. Here's a ring again. I got to cover up your nakedness. Here's a brand new robe. I've got to put something on your feet to let everybody know that you belong somewhere and you are able to walk in your, your deliverance and your victory and I'm putting something on your feet. That's what the Lord does when you come back. He doesn't penalize you because you should be back somewhere while I'm promoted because I stayed. Let me tell you about the Lord's compensation plan. If you want to holler unfair, mistreatment, that's not good. The worker early in the day gets the same penny as the one that works later in the day. That's the compensation plan. So you get tore up about the later because you showed up early, you're getting the same pay. Are, are y'all out there? Does this make sense? So put your tabulator up counting who does what and how much because, because really you're saying, I don't want to do more than anybody else. I'm the leveler. Let's make it even. Let me tell you about church work. It will never be even. There's some folk that are going to do less. There's some folk that are going to do more. But the point is, is that the one that keeps score knows. And what does he know is that your work does not move me. What moves me is that because of what I did for you, you are able to work. <laughs> I did all the heavy lifting. My son went to the cross. That's why I have an issue with people that, that think saying I love you is enough. I love you. 
But I'm telling you to say I love you and not give something is, is a, 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 a dispositional, unhealthy way, an unscriptural way of looking at love. Because everywhere in scripture that God loves something, he gave something. God so loved the world. What's the next word? Love is giving. Are, are y'all out there? We take the easy way out because it's cheap. I love you, but we won't give you a drink of water when you're suffering. I love you, but you, you won't take care of me when I'm ill. I, I love you, but you, that, that, that's cheap. But, 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 but I love you when I'm hungry means that while you're saying I love you, you show up with a plate of food and say, Can't, eat this. Eat this. And maybe while I'm eating, they do love me. They do receive me. They do love me. Come on. I'm trying to help us with something. Because we get religious about the wrong thing. And we think it's appropriate. But it's inappropriate. Because love carries a manifestation. Love is a verb. It's an action word. It does something. And it's not cheapened by just simple language that languishes on the surface. But has no depth to it. That's why when the scripture talks about love, sometimes the giving in love means love gives, suffers long. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not act up. Love does not act unseemly. Love does not seek its own. Every time love shows up, something to be given shows up too. Are y'all out there? You gave your, your, your son a banquet. He resented it because he wanted a banquet too. It's in the scripture with, with his friends. Three. I have never neglected a command of yours. That's a lie. Because the father had asked him. Come in. Has God ever asked you? Come in. You might be mad at your sister or brother. But he said. I'm the one that's in charge. Come in. I, I, I'm over this. Come in. And, and, and he refused. The, the, let's identify the problem with the older brother is that it was self-righteousness. The self-righteousness expects and demands God's approval and blessing. It resists the grace of God and refuses to rejoice in it. So the brother was prodigal and reckless. Well, 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 hang with me just for a little bit longer. We could easily list the differences in the two sons, but the similarities are more insightful. Both sons wanted a celebration, a banquet. The younger son parted with his pagan friends in a foreign land and the brother that stayed at home wanted one with his friends on the home turf. And, all, and both of them wanted a banquet without their father. Neither son seems to have really appreciated the love of their father even though he loved them. The younger did not enjoy his father, so he left. I can't stand it anymore. I want what's coming to me. So that the older brother that was left, he had a so what attitude. And not only that, not only that, he was upset for another reason. 
And when you look at scripture and you look at the way things are supposed to fall, technically the older brother should have gotten the inheritance first. And here is the younger brother. You snatch money out that belongs to me. So technically, the older brother had been, been prodigal much longer than the younger brother. He hated him from the time he left with the money bag. He hated him from that time in. While he was raking in the field, I hate you. You out there partying with my inheritance. I hate you. You got my money and you squandering it. And you spending it on, on this, that, and the other. You spending it on her. You spending it every. So he was prodigal longer than the younger brother. So the reason why he wasn't at the house when the brother got there is because he was still mad at his dad. He was out there working mad. Have you ever given your kids chore assignments and, and they don't want to do it? You tell them to vacuum the floor and because they mad, This is how they vacuum. Y'all not getting what I'm saying. You see what I'm doing? When when they mad, they will never do a good job. They will never move a chair to vacuum under it. They will never move the table to vacuum under that because they, they mad. And when you get mad, you can't hear good, so... Whatever's going on, even when mama calls, I'm going to act like I don't hear what she say. I'm going to make her call of me again. Until she have to say, you hear me? Whew. Come on, come on. Y'all might well work with it. Because some of us been that mad before. I got mad and ran away from home. Because I didn't like something my daddy did. And, 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 but I wasn't crazy. I only ran next door and got up under the porch. And I stayed to almost dinner time. And around dinner time, I crawled back from under the porch and come sauntering into the house, hitting stuff. Hungry but mad. And that's how this son was. He was mad the whole while his brother was gone. And the the very idea that you would give him a banquet And I've been here all the time working in these fields, making more money for the family. And he's got my money out there. Everybody say prodigal heart. Both sons were slave. Both were slave. One to his passion. And the other to pleasing the father through works. But the thing is, the son that was working, you were working for favor you already have. Didn't you know that all I have was yours? Well, I'm bringing this around to corner y'all board. Both sons were sinners. One was outward and one was inner. The actions of the other one, the younger was outward. The action of the, of, of the older brother was inward. But as I bring this to a close, Romans 3.23 brings us to a definite place. And it says, for all have sinned and come short. Of the glory of God. Then Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And I'm going to read it from the NASB here. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. Both sons missed it and did not see the father's love for them. Though his demonstration toward them, many times we seek to be told, I love you. But what we really need is to be shown, I love you. The older brother's works didn't work. But the younger brother's repentance did. That's the way God's grace work. It is bestowed on unworthy people, sinners, who do not trust in their good works, but in God's grace. Can we make room for people who might not look like they qualify because they haven't stayed in the house? Can we receive them? Luke 12, 32, final scripture. And it says this, do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You don't have to work for it. You got the kingdom. You don't have to die to get eternal life. Once you get saved, we know we have it. Oh, God, God. It's his good pleasure. You ought to get excited about that. To give you the kingdom. So who's worthy? Everybody's worthy. Either late or early, they're still worthy. Even though you might feel they disqualified. They're not. And don't you disqualify them by disqualifying yourself. Ooh, they still worthy. I don't, know, I don't care how awful they look, they still worthy. I don't care what they've done, they're still worthy. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. And we bless you. And we give you praise. And we thank you on this, this, this precious day set aside to celebrate, fathers, that we have a father that says, Come on into the room. I prepared a fatted calf for you. I have a relational ring for you. I can redress you. And I can cover your feet. Come on back. And to the son that feels put out. Or that I've been with you all along. Why hasn't any of these things happened for me? This same father is saying, you come in too. And so we thank you. We thank you for the invitation to your grace. And your love. That doesn't look at what happened out there or in here, but says, I'm able to work with you at the place of your submission. Help us find that place. Deal with our prodigal actions and our prodigal heart. That we can celebrate new life in you that we can celebrate reunification transformation and relationship 
Because God, we thank you. It's your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So we thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. If you heard this message and you heard our prayer and you want to surrender your heart to the Lord today, either in this room or in our viewing audience, repeat these words after me as the congregation says these same words. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Today, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe you were born of a virgin. One day you died on a cross. Three days later, you were raised from the dead. And with this confession and on this faith, I am saved to the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart today. Amen. Give him a good praise. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.